welcome to atcm today we will discuss about an elderly female who came to you with complaints of abdominal pain should begin a 77 year old female was brought to you with complaints of abdominal pain since past 7 days so on initial arrival she on initial tense second assessment she was conscious uh, but she was a slight uh, bit drowsy but she was obeying commands intermittently in between she was going drowsy mm-hmm. under the primary survey female patient with abdominal pain, pain. what can be the dds uh thing is depending on the age we have multiple differences yes. but if you have a young patient we could have think about like in a uh, reproductive age group we have to initially think about conditions like ectopic pregnancy and all that mm. and also any kind of abdominal pain like uh, coming with this thing acute abdominal could be uh, acute appendicitis acute cholecystitis acute pancreatitis this all could be dds for uh, acute abdominal pain mm. surgical causes are there medical causes mm. are also there mm. medical causes Uh, medical causes it could be like a condition like intermittent porphyria mm. uh, then maybe pancreatitis gastroenteritis hepatitis mm. then dk dk even lower son pneumonia M- acute mi everything can mm. uh, person like abdominal pain mm. so this is actually an elderly female 77 years old uh, she came with complaints of abdominal pain So when the primary survey her airway was paid and there was no signs of any obstruction there was no signs of any pooling of secretions or saliva or anything no gurgling respiratory part she had a respiratory rate of 26 per minute and spo2 it was 93% in room air and on auscultation she had bilateral basal trepidation so we started her on supplementary oxygen uh, with nasal prongs to reduce she was maintaining about 96% circulatory part her heart rate was 126 per minute and blood pressure was 100 by 60 on arrival at this point we uh, put two large iv bore cannulas 18 gauge was secured and disability part uh, she actually was conscious but in between she was going a bit drowsy so gcs was gcs was about e4 uh, v4 4 to 5 and m6 uh, she was complaining of pain uh, pain score of about uh, 7 she was telling and at this point we initially gave her 1 gram paracetamol but again she was continuing complaining of pain so we gave her tramadol 50 mg along with msc 4 mg Where and was she complaining of the pain? Which the part? pain was more of a diffuse abdominal pain, mm-hmm. but when we were trying to palpate, it was more over the right hypochondriac area. So on arrival, she was febrile. <coughs> uh, so primary adjuncts, uh, we just checked the GRBs. It was one not eight milligram per deciliter. Uh, because of respiratory distress, uh, not the tachypnea, we took an ABG. It was showing common set of metabolic acidosis. pH was seven point four one four. Uh, 6 uh, with the pco2 of 31 and bicarb of uh, 18.4 a minimal acidosis was there and other electrolytes everything was normal like uh, potassium was 3.4 sodium was 129 <coughs> and also uh, we noted creatinine to be 1.73 lactate lactate was 1.1 uh, in our uh, abg we also get bilirubin it was showing 7.8 okay. So I went to the uh, secondary survey detail history. Basically, she is a 77 year old female. Uh, she is a known case of uh, this thing. Uh, previous history of CAD is there, and also hypothyroidism. Both, both uh, she is taking medications. She also has underwent previously uh, thyroidectomy in the past, and also cholecystectomy and hysterectomy. Mm. Uh, so the history is since one week. When was the surgeries? Uh, basically, this cholecystectomy was done two years back. Hysterectomy was done about uh, eight years back. and thyroidectomy was done long time back since then she is taking a replacement with a 50 mg microgram of thyroxine so she presented with the ear with complaints of abdominal pain which started about four about one week back it was an acute in onset but was progressive in nature over each day it was progressively increasing and also it was like a constrictive pain like almost ready into the whole abdomen but if you are trying to press the abdomen it was more over the right hypochondriac that area and the pain actually uh, comparatively got better when she was lying down she had some intermittent history of fever with some mild chills but not on every day and there was no history of any vomiting or loose stools there was no history of any cough or anything but intermittently she had some mild breathlessness there was no history of any dysuria so the uh, symptoms were worsening so about 2 days back she went to a nearby hospital and uh, they found her to have some this thing on um, blood routine was showing some elevated inflammatory markers so they have advised admission but since they were not willing uh, they sent her home with antibiotics but uh, at that time they took an usg abdomen it was showing a terminal cbd obstruction uh, with moderate obstruction dilatation of the intra and hepa- uh, extra hepatic biliary radicals and so they advised for emergency admission but they were not willing but next day that is after yesterday uh, she her abdominal pain worsened so she came to the hospital today early morning mm. so there so was there a, something like a colid of colitis mm. with uh, ihbrd ihbrd is it okay so, what is charcot's triad 
charcoal trial basically uh, it is actually a trial which can suggest the possibility of cholangitis mm -hmm. so the history this thing history will be a history of abdominal pain uh, with fever uh, with chills and also uh, uh, jaundice, jaundice. Mm -hmm. elevated this thing now, was she having any complaints of uh, yellowish color discoloration of urine sclera and anything uh, history wise uh, they didn't say anything, say anything. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but uh, our vbg is having a bilirubin of 7 7.8 okay. so jaundice is there fever is there abdomen pain is also mm -hmm. there okay Mm, okay, so she doesn't have a non-allergic history. Uh, she's taken medications mainly antiplatelet, statins, and thyroxine. And also, uh, her last meal was about one day before coming to the hospital. Uh, since this pain good person, she was not in eating anything properly. It's almost like an NPO status. Clinical examination, she is conscious oriented, and respiratory part, she had uh, about um, mild basal palpitations <coughs> were present. And at this point, she was maintaining her saturation with about two liters of O2. Uh, CVS uh, S1 was heard, no murmurs. And abdomen actually, tenderness was present all over the abdomen, but more over the right hypochondry with minimal guarding was also there. Bowel sounds were heard. And CNS part, GCS was now 15 by 15. And there were no focal deficits. But on clinical examination, actually, we noticed her to have uh, this thing, ictus was present. There was no uh, limb edema, no edema or anything was not there, only ictus was present, no pallor, nothing. So this patient, uh, after the initial management, her pain subsided to about uh, 4 to 5 by 10, but it was still persisting. But considering her history, actually, we gave a gastromedicine consultation because of further like, definitive management. And later, so already it was diagnosed from outside. Also diagnosed case. So she was later admitted outside. And uh, during an ED itself, we sent for our routine evaluations <coughs> and everything. And we did a point of care, uh, this thing counts and uh, CRP. So CRP came to be 283. Uh, with a blood count of uh, about uh, uh, 15,000 was the total count and all that. So initially in ED itself we started her own antibiotics. Uh, we preferred meropenem because actually this is like a second hospital she is coming. Previously she was given Piptas at that hospital. So we started her own meropenem and also we started on IV fluids and we kept her NPO because we were planning for ERCP and all that. So we mainly, uh, our management part was initially we put her on supplementary oxygen. Then uh, we start on IV fluids, we put her on NPO, then analgesia we initially give PCM, then we put her on tramadol. And again, concerning the inflammatory, high inflammatory markers, we start on a high dose antibiotic of meropenem. Mm -hmm. And also blood cultures, everything was sent in the initial phase itself. And initially the like... Do you feel this patient is having an infection? Uh, infection, uh, the history of fever, that it could be attributed to infection, but... Mm. Mm, but inflammation also could be present like this also. Okay. Uh, mm. um, uh, is she in sepsis? Ah, so, so basically if you are thinking about QS of her scoring, initially her, uh, this thing, um, uh, she was tachypneic yes. and she was mildly confused mm. and initially her BP was about 170 but later actually it got worse into like 80-50 uh, like that. So initial uh, QS of her score was anyway 2. Mm. Okay. So actually she was in sepsis but if you act on the soft was score also it is coming about 6. 6. Okay. Uh, 9. 9. 9. Okay. Mm. okay. So anyway, she is in sepsis. Mm. So this patient uh, in ED itself actually after some time she clinically worsened. Basically mm. her uh, BP started dropping and actually we after fluid resuscitation she was not improving. So we had to start supports and all that in ED itself. And her supplementary oxygen also requirement actually got worsened after time. Uh, so later she was maintaining uh, SP2 with around 6 liters of O2. And then she was admitted to her ICU for further management. Uh, she was taken up for ERCP emergency. And emergency was about about uh, 12 hours later. She was taken for ERCP, and they noticed actually uh, she was found, found to have obstructive features along with uh, while they were draining, uh, like copious amount of pus was coming from that uh, CBD area. Okay. And obstruction was also relieved during the ERCP. Was there any uh, calculi was there? Calculi was there. Uh, was there? That was removed and the, uh, pus, the pus was, was drained. And post-op actually, uh, she was again on support only. Now she's continuing her treatment here. Okay. One more history actually, when we uh, asked in detail, actually we gave what was about six months back, she had a similar abdomen pain history. She was taken to a nearby hospital and they took a CT abdomen. It mm -hmm. was showing a CBD stone at that point. Okay. But there was no features of cholecystitis because this thing uh, post-surgery was done. So there was no other issues at that time, though, so they sent her home. Now it uh, mm -hmm. when they, uh, now the patient is in coldocolithiasis with, uh, with sepsis and later patient went into septic shock. Mm. Septic shock. Mm. So is patient fitting into the criteria that Reynolds spent that? Yeah. So basically, if it is like a simple fever, jaundice, and abdominal pain, we will put it like a charcoal striat. But she, patient also presented with uh, mild confusion and also features of sepsis. So actually, patient hypotension, hypotension also there. So he's coming into Reynolds spender. Mm.
Septic septic shock. Mm, septic shock. So in the one hour bundle, what all will we do? In the first hour, mm. uh, you told uh, ABG was taken, lactate mm. was checked, it was one point one. Mm. We started our antibiotics. Mm. Then before that, and also IV fluids. Were... IV fluid resuscitation. Uh, and right? also before thing, we we uh, took uh, blood cultures also. Mm. That shouldn't. That in in the good. first bundle. Okay. Okay. In the <coughs> progressive phase, actually, she uh, removed person, so we let her start on antibiotics also. Okay. Okay. Mm. So in the current post op phase, actually, she is maintaining okay. Okay. What yeah. was the severity of her uh, this thing? Uh, so basically, if you are trying to like classify the severity, there is actually mild, moderate, and severe. Mm. Mild will be just like a mild abdominal pain without any much involvement. But if you are coming to moderate, there will be elevated counts above twelve thousand with uh, intermittent fever of more than one or two degrees Celsius and an age above seventy five, and also hyperbilirubinemia with more than five milligram per deciliter. So this patient is actually. Uh, I'm taking multiple uh, options in this one, but if you're coming to the uh, severe part, then it should uh, uh, include some organ dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So there should be either cardiovascular, neurological, respiratory, or renal uh, or hepatic involvement. Mm -hmm. So basically, in cardiovascular, there should be hypotension recurring, neurot support, and also neurological dysfunction patient should have some disturbance of consciousness. And the respiratory part, uh, there should be some drop in PO to FA to ratio less than 300. and renal dysfunction the patient should have some history of oliguria or creatinine above 2 and hepatic dysfunction in elevated inr of more than 1.5 and hematologic dysfunction i played less than 1 lakh so in this patient he she had some cardiovascular dysfunction because her bp dropped after the on arrival and secondly she had neurological dysfunction because of she had intermittent atrial consciousness and also respiratory dysfunction because she required o2 to maintain mm -hmm. her saturation So multiple parameters of the uh, this thing. Severe criteria. Ah, uh, uh, she's uh, right taking the severe criteria. So severe acute cholangitis is a diagnosis with sepsis and septic shock. Mm. So the treatment part basically there are two things. One is aggressive antibiotic therapy, and second is definitive management, which we have to drain source the control. source okay. control. Mm. So it's it again has multiple options we have. Uh, either we can go for biliary drainage, like using endoscopic access, or maybe by percutaneous drainage or surgical drainage. Mm. Whichever is actually ideal for, depending on the patient choice, we will make an uh, decision. So the idea is basically, if it is a mild to moderate carrier, we can wait 24 to 48 hours and see if she's uh, responding to initial treatment. And if he is not sure, not sure. So showing, first we will wait that much time mm. uh, for the antibiotics to, to uh, act. act. Mm. Then only we will be planning on a ERC mm. for a mild to moderate, moderate case. case. Huh. But if she is not improving in the first 24 hours, not showing any improvement in the first 24 hours, we plan for an emergency as early as possible. Mm. Also, if the patient is coming in like moderate to severe category in the initial stages, so we plan for ERC. ERC as early as possible. Mm. Okay, yeah, like that. What is the choice of antibiotics? Antibiotic again, actually, depending on the classification, we can opt an antibiotic. So, antibiotics again, we have uh, multiple choices. Like we can go for a single agent regimen or a combination regimen. Mm. So, in every classification, we have like uh, drugs uh, mainly comprising of combination like piprazolam, taxobactam, mm. uh, in which uh, we give three point three seven five IV six hourly to four point this five six hourly. That is the a uh, single dose anti regimen if it is like a mild category we can start with peptas or maybe we can start with a cephalosporin plus a anaerobic coverage metronidazole can be and so that will be like coming with a 2 g ceftriaxone on iv od along with metronidazole a 500 mg eight hourly so either we give piprazolam as a piprazolam as a single dose or as a combo of ceftriaxone plus metronidazole can be given or levofloxacin seven fifty od can also be given But suppose in the initial stages, the patient is coming in a severe category. We start with carbapenem, so like okay. meropenem can be started. In this patient, we opt for meropenem mainly because of that reason. So meropenem can be given one gram eight hourly. Or again, if we are planning for a combination regime, we can go for cefepime or ceftriaxone two gram IV eight hourly, along with metronidazole can also be added. Which all are the main most common organism that can affect the gene? Uh, Especially gram negative. Gram negative. Mm -hmm. And why anaerobic coverage also? ियोरिटी
So luckily for this patient, actually uh, we were able to intervene as early as possible and shows the poster phase she is currently doing better. Like so she came with sepsis, we managed the sepsis, she mm -hmm. went into septic shock, that was also managed, antibiotics was started, mm -hmm. uh, uh, inotropic vasopressor supports, everything was started mm -hmm. and uh, emergency since she uh, was in the severe cat, uh, category. category, she uh, emergency ERCP, standing and the uh, stone was, was pus, pus wash out was also done. Mm -hmm. How is the vision now? Uh, she is currently on supports, but we are uh, trying to be enough the supports right now. A sensorium is completely intact. On ORAD support. On ORAD support. Uh -huh. But she is actually improving over time. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you.